It, let's talk about the rule, the rules of stress in English. Actually, English is very、uh, kind of a, a language that really focus focuses on stress a lot.、Uh, the stress and the unstress is kind of contrary a lot. English focus focus on these things a lot, and uh, uh, compared to、um, other. Maybe languages, Eastern Asia languages like Chinese. Chinese doesn't really have like such a focus on interwar stress. And、uh, usually, when we say the things like stress and、uh, stress, we call the reason. Reason,、uh, reason is basically the. It's not really like the melody. It's it's not not related to pitch. It's not related to the frequency high or or low. Reason. I just check a lot of definition of it. I mean, in the linguistic area, it's called、uh, the relation between、uh, stress syllable and the unstress syllables in the、uh, utterances. It's kind of a supra segment, so supra segmental、um, kind of a relations. So yes, there are so many different rules for English stress, and. As for what these rules are, most people actually didn't really learn it、uh, at school. Most school teachers don't teach them, either in the English-speaking countries or for those non-English-speaking countries. In English-speaking countries, most people learn these kind of rules of stress by themselves. They kind of acquire the, the language. They just listen to how their parents talk, how their Other people talk, then they just pick up these kind of things automatically, unconsciously. But a lot of、uh, English learners they learn English at school. The school teacher mostly focus on grammar, focus on vocabulary, focus on reading comprehension, maybe focus on listening. Really, rarely I can see the、uh, school teachers they will focus on this kind of、uh, reason. Or intonation, that kind of stuff. So there's kind of a lot of hidden rules in English, and only when you study like linguistics, especially、uh, I would say it's maybe phonetics, phonologies, then you will start understand, start understanding more of that. And I'm studying this, so I kind of、uh, figure out a lot more rules that I didn't even know before. I definitely, for me, it's very hard to pick up these kind of rules because I'm not a person who has strong language intuition. Some people, even they are non non English speakers, they still can pick up these kind of rules fairly quickly,、uh, as long as they kind of arrive a, a English speaking country earlier or they have very 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 strong, like, hearing that kind of stuff. I I don't know what is it related to hearings or other. Part of your brain, they're basically working on that. But anyway, anyway.、Mm. Yeah, that's what I want to、uh, say. And、uh, so let's just、uh, talk, go through a little bit of the、uh, the the rules of stress. So what what are those rules? So today I'm going to first go through the compound. Compound nouns.、Uh, compound nouns means like it's a noun. It's a noun, just a one word noun, but it, it kind of、uh, consists of two different parts of nouns,、uh, two different nouns. So, first example I'll give you is dateline. Dateline. Today is dateline. So dateline basically com combined with two words, date and line. So, if this 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 case dateline, you need to focus on the first part of the. The word date, date line, date line. The stress we need to be put on the first part of this word. Another example is airport. Airport, airport actually consists of two different words: air and port. The port in the air. So, how you should focus on this word? The where your stress point should be is the first part: air, airport, airport. When you stress the word, basically you pronounce you you kind of pronounce that part a little bit longer, 
a little bit more uh, with more power that kind of stuff so airport and another example classroom class in the room so how you pronounce you pronounce classroom and uh, maybe another example steakhouse steak and house steakhouse okay so this is for compound nouns and another example is noun and the noun combination noun noun combinations so what I mean by this is they are actually a noun phrase combined com combined by two different nouns so one example is air conditioner air conditioner so how you should stress this word air conditioner you should stress the first part of this phrase so another example will be mm, let me find out a good example mm, conventions convention center so convention is noun center is another noun so how do you should say this how you how you should stress this word convention center convention center so you should stress on the first word and usually when you stress it's not only just just stress you will still you also like put a little bit higher in pitch in this word so the pitch actually in this word is also higher convention center so it's a little bit like also not only stress not only reason also involve uh, intonation a little bit so it's why uh, this is what I want to share with you today. Compound nouns and the non-noun combinations. These two different words have uh, these kind of two types of uh, noun nouns have uh, very special uh, intonation pattern and a stress pattern. Or you can say reason. So yeah, that's all for today. And uh, have you, you ever noticed the kind of rules existing in English previously? And if you have this kind of experience, feel free to share your experience in the comment section below. And uh, other than that, I will see you next time.